Today, I want to talk about all the things that shouldn't be socially acceptable, but actually are, and I'm sick of it, so let's get started. The first one is going to work when you're sick. I know this isn't like a thing in Europe, but everywhere else just about, if you are sick, if you have a cold and you work in like McDonald's or something or a grocery store, you're expected to come in. You are absolutely expected to come to work and work your butt off if you have a fever, if you're sneezing, choking, even puking sometimes. I used to work in retail and there would be people that would be just hurling it up in the toilets and, and I was forced by my bosses to tell them that they have to continue working. They're not allowed to go home and I just felt so bad. I'm like, dude, I'm not doing this. It's not personal. I'm, I'm under orders to tell you this. Please forgive me. And I know some of you are going to be like, well, just get a doctor's note and then they can't do that. But no, the employers will find a way to fire you in a lot of parts of the world. Even if you have doctor's notes, there are literally people that are like, well, if you're healthy enough to go to the doctor and get a note, you're healthy enough to work. Like one of my worst memories ever in retail is I was stuck on a check stand before I had reached management status and I had like a 103 degree fever for like s the whole the whole shift basically. And I'm just sitting there just burning up, just dying of like f being having a fever. I'm just sitting there like blowing my nose every chance I get in between customers, which it was the holiday season, so the customers were non-stop. I just didn't have any way to, like, take care of myself, and I'm just sitting there, eyes burning, the light beaming down into my face, my entire body just melting, and then customers getting mad, like, like, oh, this guy's sick, why is he sick? Why is he on a check stand that's sick? Well, it's, there's no one else to replace him, so he has to be there. It, it was just so, it's miserable, and this was, like, over 10 years ago, and I still remember it. I can't believe that I actually did that to myself, because of of, well, I had to or I would be fired. Now, I got a re out of retail during the whole pandemic, you know, thing, but people that I still talk to that still worked at that company basically said that if you got sick with that and you were testing positive for it, you were not to tell anybody or they would fire you and you are to come into work, you know, wear the mask and all that stuff. But basically, if you were telling people, oh, yeah, that you have it and you're at work, they would fire you for it. All right. So next up is worshiping famous people. I know this is mostly a younger generation thing. And I used to be, you know, kind of in this camp, too. Like when I was younger, I would look up professional gamers and be like, oh, wow, they're the coolest people ever. And then you see them in real life and you get starstruck. And, and now that I'm a YouTuber, people kind of do this to me and stuff. And it's, it's just so weird. I'm, I'm just a normal dude. I'm just a guy. I'm just a dude that plays video games. But when they see, even if they see me in the video game, like my character is standing next to them, they got to get an autograph and take a screenshot. And they're just like going crazy over it. And I'm just like, bro, I'm just like you. I'm just playing the game and having fun, man. Like whatever. I just make videos. I'm nothing special. But like if you've ever hung out with like teenagers, <laughs> or you've been a teenager and you've hung out with people, I guess. That's a better way to word that. The, like, all they care about is stupid celebrities. Like, who gives a shit about Kim Kardashian? What the fuck did she ever do to anybody? And on that topic, it's like glorifying politicians. Like, I've, I've never been a political guy. I don't really care who the president is of whatever country or whoever the world leader is. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. But people, they, they treat it like it's their favorite soccer team, like it's their favorite baseball you know, American football hand egg team, whatever the fuck the sport's called. But also with politicians, they get paid filthy amounts of money. They become stinking rich, even if they're good or bad at their job. It doesn't matter what they do. They just make a ton of money anyway, and it, it, ugh, it's sickening. Speaking of a ton of money, what about paying for funerals? Like, okay, I don't know about you guys, but like when you get older, like people are going to start dying and it's going to start costing money. Like I'm talking like $10,000 to put a, a corpse in a box and bury it underground. I don't know if this is for every country, but where I'm from, funerals are insanely expensive. Even cremation is thousands of dollars. And then on a completely different topic, what about child beauty pageants, okay? Uh, they're, they're not really in my part of the world, but I, it's just so weird. It's so creepy. It like, not, not only is it, is it creepy for like adults to be fawning over this kind of crap, but at the same time, it's like to the child, you're basically teaching the children that the only thing that matters is looks, not personality, just looks. So you gotta look good and people will like you. You don't need to be a likable person like socially. And now personally, I've never been in a beauty pageant. I was approached many times by adults as a child myself. Uh, asking for me to be in them because I was a very strong and athletic child, okay? I could do handstands, flagpoles, I could do flips. I was a, a hyper-athletic child, and so, you know, like, randomly people at school or whatever would come and be like, hey, so do you want to be in this little pageant here? And so you could make some money, and, I, you know, I'd go tell my parents, and they would just be like, hell no. And I never understood as a kid, like, what's the big deal? You know, money good, right? And, and now I know. 
Okay, but back to work-related things, working 60 hours a week. This is something that I had to do in management and retail. It's basically I had to work six days a week minimum. I had to work 12 hours a day minimum, and it was just, it's so tiring. And you, your soul just wants to leave your body. Like if nukes like were like falling from the sky, I'd be like, Thank God it's over. I don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> I'm being serious. It's like, man, like you just sit there at work and you just hope that something happens, like the store burns down or like you get invaded by like 100 people armed with guns like a like a freaking action movie in the 90s or something. And it's not just like the crappy jobs like the food industry or retail. It's also like uh, uh, the medical industry too, like doctors and nurses. They're all tired as hell. They're all overworked, understaffed. It's insane. And culturally, they treat it like this is some sort of virtuous thing, like, oh, I'm working 16 hours a day, bro. I'm such a hard and tough and good person for the society. No! People today are working so, so much harder than back in the feudal ages, you know, where you would have a lord and a king and you would grow your cabbages and your cabbage patch. You know, like, th those are good times, but now we're, we're, we're working way harder than that. I mean, okay, granted, I'm a YouTuber, and I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm pulling 19-hour days doing this YouTube thing. <laughs> and it's mainly because I don't have a choice. I have to do this or I starve to death. There's just no other alternative. What about tipping? I always see tipping brought up in these kind of discussions of what's, you know, socially acceptable, but it shouldn't. And it's like, well, the employer should pay the employee more and, and stuff like that, and... I've never worked a job, really, where I'm expected to receive tips. I have received tips working in retail before, which always threw me off, because it's like, I'm just doing my job, bro. But hey, thanks, I'll take it, sure, why not? Then you learn, like, some people, they, they, like, their job requires tips. Like, apparently, waiters in certain countries, like, I think America, United States, whatever, they, they get paid, like, $2 an hour, and they, they are, like, they have to live off tips. And as a YouTuber, I kind of have to live off tips, too, so... Uh, but it's not really, like, the same thing, right? I'm not, like, bringing you plates of food. I'm just giving you free videos on YouTube, and it's like... If you want to throw me some money, I'm not going to say no. Well, what do you guys think about tipping? Like, should it should businesses be allowed to underpay their employees and rely on tips? Like, there was one place, uh, like some restaurant I went to a long time ago, and I learned, like, I, I had, there was two different waitresses that helped me, and I was wondering who gets the tip, and they're like, oh, well, at the end of the day, we pull all the tips and split it evenly. I was like, well, that's stupid. What if you have someone that just sucks at their job and is being rude all the time, and they're not pulling in any tips, you know, and then they couldn't really talk about it because of employment like regulations or the, their boss wouldn't let them. You, you get the idea, right? But speaking of restaurants, I don't know about you guys, but because I kind of live in a ghetto. Do you guys have problems with people in public places like restaurants or stores where they just have these really loud and angry conversations while on speakerphone? Like, they're just screaming at their employees, screaming at their, like, sons or daughters over the phone, like, at the top of their lungs, and just completely oblivious to everyone around them. It's, it, I've seen it every single day, when I go anywhere, like, if I just go to the local store or something to, like, pick up a gallon of milk, or, you know, whatever, maybe a rotisserie chicken, there's always just some grouchy person just screaming at, so loud into their phone, just around everyone else, and everyone just kind of minds their own business, like, oh, better not piss off that dude. When I was in my early 20s and I would have a burner phone, I would pretend to get on the phone next to these people and I would say really loud, obnoxious things, you know, talking about like, uh, I don't know, lube or blood or, you know, just anything to try to gross them out or give them some shock value because I'm, I'm, I'm a big troll. I'm a big in real life troll. Not quite levels of like Frank Castle or anything. Not yet, at least. Not that far gone, but I'm getting there. Now, this one I want your opinion on. Hit me up in the comments, but this one is, it's like alcoholism, okay? It, you see it in movies, video games, and just any kind of media where it's like, oh, the, the, the sexy spy, you know, or the detective, and they're always drinking alcohol, they're always drinking gins, martinis, you know, and then, like, what the hell? I think Rick and Morty has it, where Rick is constantly drunk or drinking, or at least in the earlier seasons. I don't really watch Rick and Morty that much, but you get what I'm saying, right? Like, characters that are just... Like, they're just idolizing the fact that they're drinking. Like, that, th like, I've seen drinking ruin lives, childhoods, killing people's livers, giving them severe health problems. I've worked with a lot of people that this has consumed their entire life, but media plays it off like, haha, la, funny XD. And it's not just like cartoons and media and movies. It's literally when you're an adult and you want to hang out with other adults, that's like the only thing there is to go do. Oh, it's Friday night. What do you want to go do? For me, I'm like, I want to go to the gym. I want to go to an arcade and the other adults are like ew an arcade like for children like video games are you stupid 
And I'm like, what the hell? No. And they're like, no, nah, let's go to the bar and get fucking drunk. And I'm like, well, I don't drink. Uh, what the, like, drinking is expensive. It's, it's also not healthy. You gain nothing from it. And these people are like, like, uh, you know, I understand people drink because they're socially awkward or whatever. Maybe should, they should just improve themselves. Uh, I have, you know, I'm pretty autistic, so I don't really care about my social presence in, in public, but whatever. But like, I used to be a designated driver when I was in my early 20s. And back when I had friends, or at least I thought they were friends, they would always get super drunk and cause a whole lot of problems. And it was just a nightmare to deal with every freaking weekend. I would have coworkers that would come into work and their, like, skin would just smell and reek of alcohol, and it was just so weird. Why does society, why is this acceptable? I, I don't understand. Can someone please clarify it for me in the comments? Like, speaking of nasty co-workers, what about littering cigarette butts? That's so, ugh, man, just, like, throw it in the trash or something. Like, a lot of stores now, like, retail stores, have these little spe specific receptacles specifically for cigarettes. Now, back to the restaurant thing, right, where people are talking loudly over the phone. What about families that give their little kids phones and they just play loud, loud music while at a restaurant? Like, you know, I could be sitting down, like, eating food somewhere, and someone is just playing, like, uh, Baby Shark doo -doo 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 on their phone at, like, maximum volume for, like, the next 20 to 30 minutes nonstop. And it's like, oh my god, get some headphones or something. Now, I want to be meta for a moment in this video, and, um... Uh, you know, because I talk to a lot of people about these topics before I make these videos, and some of them are saying, like, well, influencers and YouTubers and streamers and blah, 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 right? And they're like, you know, they complain that people are obsessively, like, taking pictures of their meals and trying to make money off of it or just monetize everything they do in life. And to me, it's because I'm a YouTuber. It's like, well, why the hell wouldn't you monetize it, right? Like, if I'm going to play a video game, I might as well help someone out in the world. And if I'm helping someone, they might send me a tip or subscribe or become a channel member or any kind of, you know, you know, it helps. Like, I'm helping them. They can help me a little bit, too. But, like, I, I guess if I just took pictures of, like, fancy looking ice creams and gourmet dinners all day that, you know, that would be kind of annoying. But... Uh, surely it helped maybe it helps someone i don't know i i can't i don't really see it because i'm a youtuber so but people do that is one complaint that a lot of people have now this is another one too um that's really really annoying that i found as an adult and even as a young adult like uh people that always ask you so so when are you having kids when are you getting married have you been trying to have kids why don't you have kids yet i want some grandkids oh why don't you have any kids everyone else your age is having kids and it's like, why is this so normal to ask? It's so intrusive. It's like, what the hell are you doing? How do you even know if I am allowed to have kids? How do you, how, well, not allowed, I'm, of course I'm allowed to have kids, but how do you know I can, I'm physically capable of having kids? You know, like you, this is brought up from like random people that don't even know if you have a girlfriend or not. And on that subject, it's like when you ask people, like I can understand that if you're a guy and you're talking to a girl, you kind of want to pry if she has a, a boyfriend or not. I understand that. But like if you're hanging out with some dudes and they're trying to pry if you got a girlfriend yet or if you're looking for a boyfriend, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, come on, bros. Like, what the hell? And it doesn't matter what you tell these people. Like, well, if you tell them that you can't have kids or you've been doing it nonstop and, they're, and yeah, it hasn't happened yet, they're just going to be like, well, why don't you adopt then? Why don't you have some kids? Why don't you adopt? I mean, me personally, I always tell people straight up, I'm poor. I don't have money. I can't afford to raise no kids. What the hell you expect me to do? I spent my entire time doing YouTube and it barely pays. It doesn't even technically really honestly pay the bills at all. So how am I supposed to bring a kid into this world? <laughs> and speaking of money, okay, what's the deal with charging more money for healthy food than crappy food? Like right now I can go to the store and I can buy gallons of soda for way cheaper than gallons of water. I'm talking like half the price. Why is one ingredient, a base ingredient, literally water? The most prolific ingredient on the damn planet. Why is it more expensive than combining water and sugar and syrups and flavorings? I don't understand. Like just getting a chicken and a salad costs more than like a triple cheeseburger. I'm not even joking. So this one is a personal thing. I don't know. Like I'm sure maybe there's someone out there that's going to get mad at this one. But tanning beds, they are so disgusting. Like I've had coworkers that like religiously lay on tanning beds to make their skin tan. And they look like burnt, crispy, uh, they're just burnt and crispy and leathery. It's so gross. Like, and I'm sure they're g probably going to get skin cancer from it too. It's like, why are you cooking? You're literally cooking your skin. I've never been attracted to tanness. I've always been attracted to paleness. I don't know. You know, give, give me a, 
<laughs> pale goth vampire, right? Uh, but personally, like, it's it's so weird. Why the hell would you leatherfy your freaking skin and pay money to do it? It makes no sense. Now, there's one thing I would really like to rant on, which would be an entire different video, but YouTube would not have any of it, and that is just the school system in general. I'm talking the educational program, one-size-fits-all mandate crap, or the zero tolerance policies like if someone physically attacks you in school even if you do nothing you're also in trouble just because the, the attack happened at all it, it's so stupid i'm not going to go into it because youtube that's a no-no zone for youtube so i'm just going to move on now uh this one was uh, is more of a childhood thing and i'm i know plenty of kids had to go through this let me know in the comments if you went through this but like Basically, parents or relatives forcing you to, like, give your relatives a hug or a kiss on the cheek or, you know, handshakes. Like, as a kid, I was, you know, very socially awkward. I was socially awkward until my early 20s. And uh, it was just like, I don't want to hug you. I don't want to hug this person. I don't want to touch them. I don't want to touch their hand. I don't want to kiss their wrinkly old cheek. And yes, I know as an adult, it's like, who gives a shit now? I'm like, I'm past it. It's it's fine. Right. But as a kid, you're basically teaching me that I have no right to my own body. And uh, my word means nothing to you because, oh, you better hug your grandma. And it's like, well, now my grandmas are dead. So it's like, I guess it's OK that I did hug them, you know, while they were alive. But at the same time, as a kid, I was like, I don't want to touch her. Ooh, gross. Now, the next one is simple. It used to be a channel theme in every video, but not returning your damn shopping cart. How hard is it to take your cart and walk 10 feet away to the cart return and put it in? You're literally a bad person if you don't do this. All right, so treating like retail and fast food employees like they're less than human. Why is this socially acceptable? It's so weird that like... Even if you're stand, if you stand up for yourself in these like markets, other customers will just come to like the aid of a shoplifter. Like some guy could run out the door with thousands of dollars worth of product, and then if the employees do anything about it, the customers are like, "Oh, you shouldn't be yelling at them. You shouldn't be treating them like that." Like the the, the shoplifter is more human and has more rights than the retail wagey, the retail employee. The retail, like, it's it's so weird. They don't they don't see you as a human being. They see you as an object or or an object that's either in their way or or of anything. It's I'm sorry that I'm stuttering so much here, but it's it's really weird that people that shop at these stores or that order fast food do not see the other person as a human. They just immediately go zero to 100 in angry mode the second that something doesn't go their way or they just scream at you like like first contact. Like I have never once like went anywhere and just screamed at someone even if the company did a big oopsie doopsie you know like i order a burger and i get a like a, a, i live one time i literally went to a, a mcdonald's and i ordered a big mac and i got my big mac with no meat on it there was just no meat and i was like well that's weird uh so i didn't go back there and start screaming and throwing stuff and being and raising l i just talked to them like a normal person and it's like oh okay um, you know, here you go, and in, in that specific instance, they gave me junior patties, and I was like, you know what, I'm just, just, whatever, man. Like, I still would not raise my voice or get angry, because there's still people, and at this point, you know, it's like, man, their, their job probably really, really sucks, and, and there's nothing I can really do to help them or or whatever screaming at them at the top of my lungs and bashing my hands on the desks or tables or whatever the hell would not get them to fix the big mac anyway so why even do it all right so what about being shamed for either being religious or non-religious now i don't know about your part of the world but this was also probably a more of an 80s and 90s thing. But like if you weren't a specific religion in my area, you were absolutely shamed for it. You were basically shunned. You were outcasted. You were kicked to the curb. And it's not so bad nowadays. But like there's still that group of people that if they learn that you don't believe what they believe, you are not even human. You are an insect in their way and they will treat you like absolute dirt. All right, so what about cancel culture? Now, me specifically, I don't really do any political kind of stuff, but I am a video game troll, and I used to have a video game channel where I played Minecraft, and yes, I used hacks and cheats and exploits, and I would join servers as a Minecraft YouTuber and burn everyone's buildings down and blow them all up and plant a million trees all over their base, which the admins could not reverse the damage at the time. There was so many things that I did. I pour lava all over everything. Basically, I was a video game griefer, and I still am. But in, on that YouTube channel, I had a webcam, and I was very open about my my life and, you know, where I worked. And, oh, would you know, all these people decided to try to cancel me. And this is way before 2016, by the way, when whenever it wasn't really that normal. And these people would, like, call my bosses and call corporate on me saying that I'm this evil, mean person, that I'm 
doing these her heinous, heinous things on the internet, and it's I'm just playing a video game the way I want to play a video game, right? And even in today's age, like like I've got videos on my channel where I troll Counter Strike, Overwatch, Foxhole, and there are just endless waves of people that are like, "Well, let's get them banned off YouTube," and it's like, um, it's not against the rules on YouTube to play a video game. Just because I'm being a villain in your game does not make that bad. But people will still try to do it anything anyway. They'll sit in false reports. And I've seen this on other trolling channels where people, like, find out where they live and stuff, and it's just nutty, it's so crazy. And somehow this is just okay that people do this? Like, leave it to the police and the judges, okay? And then, I guess, finally, forcing people to be social. This is such a stupid thing. You see these threads online all the time. It's like a picture of a family or, like, a classroom, and every single person has their head turned towards the camera. And it's usually captioned, like, Look who decided to come out of their cave! Hey, what will you be having for Thanksgiving, Anon? And it's like, uh, you know, just, just forcing people to be social in general, like, uh, you know, parents forcing their kids to go to parties and social events that they don't want to go to. I was forced into all different sorts of, like, family Christmas parties and social events as a child, and I was a very huge in blue-pilled introvert, big time. Right. I didn't basically learn social skills until I worked retail, but essentially, um, you know, I was miserable the entire time. It wasn't helping me one single bit. It was just forcing me to do something I didn't want to do. And why is that OK? Why is that acceptable? Anyway, I'm Swole Bidgey. Thanks for watching. As always, be a bro and stay swole. Let me know what you think. I read every single comment and make sure you're subscribed because I got videos every single day. On the right side of your screen in this video, you should absolutely click if you want to join the discord. Uh, just link is in the description. Uh, the gameplay footage you're looking at was Albion Online. With that said, I will see you in tomorrow's video. Take care. If you want to support the channel, become a channel member. Click join down below. Five bucks a month. I really appreciate it. Take care.